Good afternoon. Thank you, Astro, for the introduction. I'm uh, Babak Paris, and uh, I would like to take the next few minutes and talk to you about a program we've worked on for the, for the past period of time, which involves uh, packing contact lenses with all sorts of crazy and tiny things to make, him f uh, make these con uh, contact lenses a functional platform. If I can slide. Can you go back, please? Yeah. So we've had actually a program for some time now to uh, take a contact lens, which is an interesting uh, piece of polymer, engineered polymer, and attempt to put different types of devices, tiny devices, onto it for two particular reasons. One is that we, uh, we believe that this actually can have an interesting uh, application in healthcare, uh, and the second one is the application of a contact lens that has devices in it for uh, information display. So I'd like to first uh, tell you why we might be interested in contact lenses for healthcare monitoring, then tell you what happens for information display, and give you a few examples of uh, how we've attempted to actually implement uh, these devices. So going back actually to what happens uh, today in healthcare, if, if we feel um, uh, ill, we will go visit a physician, and the first thing that they would do is uh, perhaps take our pulse or have a look at us. So do some physical measurements. That's the first line of uh, data going to the, to the medical practitioner. Uh, but that's typically not enough. If they see that there's something wrong, they would uh, prescribe perhaps a, a blood test or a urine test. So we need actually, in order to get a sense of what happens in people's body, we need to have a chemical interface, do a chemical analysis uh, to get a sense of whether a person is... Uh, is healthy or not. And if you would like to continuously know if the person is healthy or not, we have to have devices that would uh, provide the interface uh, uh, to the body and report, uh, re report the results back. So how do we do this? Can we use devices that are outside of the body? For the most part, these devices, if they're not in contact with the body, can report a physical parameter. Maybe I can measure the person's temperature or do some imaging and try to infer the person's health from the image I receive. Um, but that can go only so far. So I have to get closer to the body. The other option is to do an implant. And there's many implants, very interesting implants uh, available today. Uh, but unfortunately, a body actually reacts to foreign objects. So anything that implant uh, in, in the body is going to face body reaction. And as of today, we don't really have any sensor that can last inside the body, a chemical sensor, for an extended period of time. So a matter of days is okay, but uh, we have nothing that can last for years and years and uh, report the chemical analysis results. Uh, the other option is to put something on the surface of the body. And we saw a really interesting talk uh, this morning about that. Um, and there's issues with that. So if you go on the skin, there's some, some you know, you've all uh, put Band-Aids on our skin, and you know, actually you know what happens to the Band-Aid after, after a few days. But there's actually one interface on the surface of the body that uh, can literally provide uh, us uh, with a window of uh, what happens inside, and that's the surface of the eye. It's a very interesting chemical interface. Uh, here's, a, here's a table showing uh, what uh, you may find in your tear film and what you may find in your blood, and you would immediately notice that a lot of things that uh, are found in your blood also are found in your tear film. It's not very surprising because the surface of the eye is covered by live cells. Your body has to keep these cells alive. So there is actually an interchange between the surface of the, your eye and the rest of your body. So our idea has been uh, that if we could make a contact lens that could have sensors and do an analysis on the surface of the eye and report the results back wirelessly, we may be able to get a sense of what happens inside people's body uh, without actually going inside people's body. And we might be able to do this continuously at all times. Uh, so one good thing about contact lenses is that we already know that more than 120 million people wear them, and many people have been wearing them for decades. So that's a good interface to the body. That's, a, that's an acceptable interface to the body. So we don't really know actually what's possible from this uh, surface. We know, for example, glucose shows up, we know lactate shows up, but we don't really have medicine based on the tear film or the surface of the eye. Our medicine is based on blood, uh, blood analysis. So if we can make this radically new device, we have to also create the relevant medical knowledge and then associate with that create the, create the therapy. So there's a lot of stuff that we need to do. But this can, in principle, provide a radically new interface with the human body, really probably for the first time, enabling continuous monitoring of the person's health and collecting the data. So it could be a good thing. 
Uh, in the domain of uh, information display, actually, we've been toying with the idea of what happens if you put a display on your contact lens. So what it, uh, if I could make a contact lens that could show me information and it would talk to my cell phone and the cell phone talk, would talk to the tower and the, and the cloud eventually and uh, enable some at least uh, level of visual interaction for the person who is wearing this. Uh, could be very simple, could be just one pixel or a handful of pixels, it could be a much more sophisticated graphics if some, someday this is, uh, this is enabled. And you can think of all sorts of, uh, I think, interesting applications for a display that you can wear as a contact lens. Uh, there are some applications like augmented reality that uh, are possible to implement right now even on, your, on the cell phones. That this is something that you would normally see in your cell phone if you hold up your cell phone and walk around. And if you have an augmented reality system, this can superimpose some extra information, for example, on the image that you would normally see. Um, whether this is possible to implement on a contact lens in a, in a short time or, or not, my answer is not in a short time, but the prospects are there. So we can actually enrich what people normally see with extra layers of data as they go about their uh, daily lives. Um, there is another uh, aspect of this, if you could someday put a display in a contact lens, and that is fundamentally we don't need lots of displays. So if, we, if I think about my daily routine, I wake up in the morning, I look at my watch, I look at my smartphone, these are different screens, I may watch some TV, I drive, my car has a dashboard, I go to work, I use my laptop. There are lots of different screens through, during the day that I interact with, including billboards. But what all those things do is to put something on my retina. So I don't really need all of those. I just need one display that's personal to me. Maybe it's in the form of a contact lens that shows me the relevant information. I just wear my own personal display and uh, just use that one. So having actually a contact lens that does these things, monitors your health all the time, allows you to be healthy, or shows you extra layers of information, sounds like science fiction. I have to solve a lot of problems in order to to enable this. I have to make really small devices, I have to make small radios, antennas, sensors, light sources, and I have to integrate all these into a contact lens, make sure that the whole thing works and uh, the whole thing is safe and biocompatible. And uh, to a lot of people, I think this sounds like science fiction, just not doable. What I would like to do in the next minute or two is to show you what we've done, at least attempting to move in this direction to make this uh, vision a reality. Uh, one of the things that helps, uh, helps us quite a bit is the progression of uh, the semiconductor industry. Really what it can do is amazing today. So it's an actual radio built by, by a group. Uh, these devices can get extremely small. So in a very tiny area, which is only 450 microns by 450 microns, you can pack quite a bit of function. So this is an actual radio chip that does something useful. So we can actually make really small devices like that. They are not single devices anymore, they are systems. Um, the progression of the in semiconductor industry and the ability to make very small semiconductor devices has had an offshoot which is using some of these techniques to make uh, very small sensors. So today actually these are not science fiction anymore. We can make very small sensors. Some of them are definitely smaller than a single cell that can detect a biomolecule. So we can make small devices. The third uh, piece of technology that's very relevant, and we've worked on this, and you, you heard actually a very, uh, very interesting talk also earlier today on this, is uh, integration technology. So we can make small devices, and we've developed a series of uh, techniques to put these uh, grains of sand essentially in new materials. They could go on plastic, they could go on, go on paper. Uh, uh, we've done things on glass and uh, bring function to places that normally didn't have. So we have not traditionally had functional paper or fu functional windows and things like that. And particularly we use this to make functional, uh, uh, functional plastic systems that in, that in the form of the contact lenses. So we have a series of technologies that we use that allow us to miniaturize and we have other technologies that uh, allow us to integrate devices into flexible and unusual substrates and if we put them uh, together, we get things like this. So we can actually today make contact lenses that these are real contact lenses that have other things in them in addition to just being a contact lens for correcting vision. The, uh, the picture on the left is uh, a contact lens that has metal traces and other things. On the right, you see how this is tested on an animal for safety. And so far, actually, all of our contact lenses have been safe. Now, in terms of function, where is it that uh, we are uh, as of today? So this is an actual contact lens on the upper right corner. 
So we can make contact lenses that have really tiny glucose sensors. They have antennas, they have radios, and they have readout circuits. Uh, we can power these contact lenses uh, remotely with incoming RF, uh, RF broadcast. Uh, the contact lens wakes up, measures glucose in its environment, and radios back the results. Uh, so this is a beaker test. We've never tested this on an animal or a human. But this level of actually technology is available today. So it's not science, fi science fiction. We can actually do this. Uh, this is the actual data from uh, one of these, these contact lenses. And it looks like a busy, busy slide. But uh, there's only one point that I would like to draw your attention to, which is the power consumption of these systems. So we talked about miniaturization and why miniaturization, having small devices, has allowed us to put lots of function on the contact lens. But there is actually another thing associated with having access to really tiny devices, which is these devices consume very, very tiny amounts of power. So now, actually, we can do things that were uh, previously impossible because we have access to ultra-low power technology. And this particular si system, the whole system operates on three microwatts. And you know, a few decades ago, this was noise. Today, three microwatts is something we use, actually, to transmit data and run systems. This is actually fundamentally being uh, enabled by the semiconductor technology. So real quick, uh, just to quickly report on where we are on the displays. Um, displays are very difficult, actually, to construct on contact lenses. The first thing that you would say is that it's impossible to even uh, bring them into focus, because how do I bring an image into focus from something that's directly on my eye, which is a very, very valid point. So what we do actually in the display domain is to pack, again, use miniaturization technology to pack other types of optical components on the surface of the contact lens, including Fresnel lenses. So on the lower right corner, you see a rabbit that is wearing a contact lens that has all sorts of other optical components in it to manipulate the image that comes in. And uh, at least we've been able to show that computationally you can have an, uh, have an image that is in focus. So one, one I guess, takeaway from this is that traditionally spe spectacles have been simple lenses. We don't have to stay there. With the miniaturization technology, we can pack a lot of other optical devices in a contact lens and uh, help people see in a different way. And this was a simulation result of how you might actually see through a contact lens that has a display that just basically shows you the letter E. I'd like to end by showing you a quick uh, movie. So maybe we can get the movie going. This is um, a contact lens system fully packaged. This is RF powered. Uh, we have our custom designed uh, light sources integrated into the contact lens, has radios. Uh, we can power this up, we can control it, and uh, we have a pixel that we can control on these contact lenses. So we have two colors right now. We can have only uh, blue uh, and red. Um, and I guess it's a stretch of imagination really to call a single pixel display a display, but that's uh, at the moment the state of the art. So with that, I would like uh, to thank you for your attention and uh, hopefully I've been able to convince you that there are some really interesting things that we can do on the surface of the eye. Thank you. Let us define X. X is a solution, a solution to a seemingly insurmountable problem, like climate change or cancer one that affects the world. But what if we redefine X as a challenge, an opportunity for radical thinking, a chance to light up the world with breakthrough ideas and cutting edge technology, the stuff of science fiction that just might fly after all. Solving for X requires wonder and imagination and the vision to build seemingly impossible solutions to the world's biggest problems. Solve for X. Moonshot thinking.